Okay, so let's finish up this lab. Uh, we're on procedure C now. Uh, again, look at the other videos for procedure A and B. Uh, let's take a look at procedure C. Uh, similar concept, we have uh, three different columns of rock. These could be cliff faces. This could be where uh, the rock was blasted in order to make a road or a railway, and we can see what the rock layers look like from the side. It also could be, in some situations, uh, holes drilled down to see what rocks uh, and fossils are found uh, deep down. Anyway, uh, in this part of the lab, it says draw lines representing equivalent boundaries between rock layers from one column to the next. So basically what this means is if we have these three different locations and we have these sequences of rock, we're going to try to connect them. We're going to try to match them. So if we look down here, well, here's the symbol for a nice, and we have nice at all three layers at the bottom. So I'm going to draw lines connecting the tops of those layers of nice. Now uh, let, me, let me zoom in on that so you can see that a little better. There we go. And now we have uh, shale and shale here, so I'm going to connect those together and match them. So we have shale and shale, but now the shale is missing. And it's not that the shell was never there, it's probably that it eroded away. So I'm going to draw that by having my line for the shell go down here. And that means that between two and one, the shell eroded away. Whenever we have this happen, where we have this missing rock layer, again, that's called an unconformity. I think I'll show that with a pen so it shows up a little better. And again, the unconformity represents missing rock. And you show that with a squiggly line like that. And that represents that rock is missing. The shale is gone and, and it eroded away, it weathered and eroded away. It was exposed at the surface, weathering and erosion carried that rock material away. And the shale is just simply missing from uh, column one. That also represents missing time. And it's not that time of course stopped or anything strange like that, but we lost that record of what was there in column one. Now we have uh, the sandstones to match. The sandstones match up well. There's no issue there. Now if we look at um, column one and three, here we have conglomerate in one, we have conglomerate in three, but it's missing in two. So that means we have another unconformity, another area where weathering and erosion took place, and we don't have that conglomerate layer there. It's not that it was never there, it's just that it's gone now. Weathering and erosion removed it. Again, another unconformity, missing rock. If we move on, now we have a sandstone layer here. That sandstone layer is missing here and here, which means I'm gonna come down like this. And again, we have that unconformity. The uh, weathering and erosion eroded away that sandstone. Now if we look to the limestone, we have limestone here and here, so I can connect those. Limestone's totally gone in column three. So again, we have another unconformity. The limestone is missing. Now we have shale and shale here. No shale in column one which means, again, another unconformity. So we have more rock that's weathered and eroded away. Now we have conglomerate, conglomerate, conglomerate. No unconformity, that matches nicely. And now we have sandstone in one, sandstone in three, but it's missing in two. So I'm gonna show that with a line uh, like that and like this. And this means that we have another unconformity at two. Right, again, uh, an unconformity means that the rock weathered and eroded away. And then we have shale and shale uh, between one and two. So if we put this in order, what this means is that we're going to have our nice down at the bottom. So I'm going to draw the nice. Draw some kind of wavy lines like that. Our next layer going up would be the shale.
Then after that, we're going to have sandstone. Then after that, we have uh, the conglomerate, the first conglomerate. And then we keep going up. Now we have a pretty thick layer of sandstone. And then uh, above that, we have limestone. There's our limestone layer. Above that, we have more shale. Then we have conglomerate again. There's conglomerate. And then our last two layers are sandstone the sandstone here at the top of three. And then we have the shell. Like that. Okay, so that's our completed uh, column for part C. And we drew in the unconformities. That's where those would be. And uh, I think that that's it for procedure C. Now, um, let's just take a quick look at the questions. Again, I'm not going to write up the answers for you, but I'll just give you some uh, things to think about as you write your answers. So um, there'll be a separate document for you to write your, your answers in. It says explain why some rock layers can be missing from uh, this sequence and some outcrops. Well again this has to do with this whole concept of um, an unconformity. That's not exactly the answer, I'm just writing down some thoughts. Some areas have experienced weathering and erosion, and those areas that haven't, those rocks were just never exposed at the surface. That's basically the definition of an unconformity. Uh, for number three, it says, why is it easier for you to correlate diagrams than it is for geologists in the field to reconstruct a sequence of events? What we did might have seemed confusing, but for a real geologist, it's actually even a lot harder. Uh, and, and one of the reasons is that most of this is underground. Most rock is underground. Uh, it might be buried. Uh, it could be covered up by grass and trees. It could be paved over with concrete. And it becomes really difficult for geologists to try to figure out, well, what's actually under the ground? Uh, because you can't really see into the earth. Uh, the only real places we can see are, are cliff faces or where rock has been blasted. Uh, so it, it becomes very difficult for geologists to try to, geologists to, try to piece that together. For number four, it says in procedure B, what is the youngest possible age of the rock uh, stratum? Stratum is just layer at the very bottom of the geologic column. Well, if we go back to that for a minute. Let's see. Procedure B is, is this one here where we put the age of the fossils on. And it says in procedure B, what is the youngest possible age of the rock uh, at the very bottom of the geologic column. Well, at the very bottom of the column, if the Devonian was between 416 and 359, then the youngest below that would be 360 million years. That's the youngest possible age. Is, is quite probable, it's much older than that. And then it says in procedure B, how many years are represented between the top and bottom fossil bearing layers? So if we look at the fossil on the top, up here, 33.7, fossil at the bottom would be, well, the oldest would be 416. So, you know, creatures don't, live and die on one year, but roughly we would take 416 million years and subtract that from 33.7 to get the answer there. For number six, it says explain why you can find the same type of fossil in different types of rock strata. Well, you know, again, strata just means layers. Uh, we can find the same fossil in different types of rocks because 
Well, the organism lived in different places. and was buried by different sediments. The type of sedimentary rock the fossils found in just depends on what type of sediment was deposited and really has nothing to do with the, the creature itself. Uh, for number seven, explain how it is possible that a given type of fossil may be found in a rock stratum at one outcrop but missing from another. Well, remember, these are living organisms. It doesn't mean that they always stayed in the same place. Maybe there was a reason why they were in one location and not another. In the case of ocean water, well, how salty the ocean is can determine where a creature might live and might not. Uh, it could be sometimes creatures like to live near the uh, mouth of a river where it's spilling into the ocean. There's more uh, fresh water and nutrients there. There could be a whole variety of different reasons. Um, but organisms live in specific places. Or I'll say in specific habitats. If we look at procedure C, uh, the part we just did, it says, uh, what is the reason that the limestone in column 1 is thinner than the limestone in column 2? So if we look at the limestone here, this limestone layer is not as thick as it is here. Well, it's probably because the limestone in column one has been eroded. We have an unconformity at the top. So some of limestone uh, in column one, some of the limestone in column one has been weathered and eroded away. So um, the limestone in column one has been eroded. Again, there's that unconformity at the top of the limestone in column one. And then uh, for number nine, it says, according to the appearance of the right side of each column in procedure C, which rock type appears to be the least resistant to weathering and erosion? Well, this is an idea that we talked about when we were in, in the classroom. If we look at the sides of these columns, it's showing how much they've weathered and eroded. And if we look at the question, it says, what is the reason that the limestone column one is thinner? Oh wait, no, sorry, question nine. Um, least resistant to weathering and erosion, that's the one that's weathered the most. And if we look at these rock outcrops from the side, the one that's weathered more than any other would be the shale. Uh, the shale weathers more. And that's just simply because it has those layers, water gets in the layers, freezes, expands, we have frost action, we have frost wedging. Uh, so the shale weathers the most. And I'll leave it up to you to explain why. I already just kind of explained that. And I'll also leave it up to you to try to figure out the conclusion. Okay. But that really should be a very thorough overview of the lab and should give you enough information to be able to, to do it on your own. Uh, I'll have this, uh, these questions posted in a Google document where you could just write it in there. For the diagrams, you could, if you have a printer, you can print these pages out. I'll have the lab up as a PDF. If you don't have a printer or out of ink or paper, you could just draw them on paper. Okay, So uh, that should do it for the lab, and uh, you should be all set there. Uh, we'll talk about geologic time more in the future, and we'll also talk about uh, dinosaurs and early mammals uh, in later videos, too. So that's all for now.